much. Sorry. Casey, man, thank you so much for for being willing to uh, to do this interview. I know it was quite short notice, but we uh, on the channel we watched the the doctor the doctor Mike uh, video that he made on you. Um, and then I went to your YouTube page because I saw I was like, oh, this guy actually makes uh, YouTube videos. And I was like, you know what? My, why don't we try and get him on the um, on the uh, on the channel to do a little interview? And you were super down to do it. So seriously, I appreciate it, man. No problem at all. It's my pleasure. I love attention, so it's cool. <laughs> uh, so that's why you did the whole show was just for attention, then, all right? I mean, there's some other reasons that were like vastly <laughs> in front of that, but like. I mean, people would be like, hey, you should be on TV. You're so funny. And then little did I know that I would be on there, but not for a reason of being funny. <laughs> well, you never know. Maybe it was part of it. They just didn't tell you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's what it was. They're like, you're so great, but also you're really, really big. So, mm -hmm. so okay. Know. So I kind of want to want to go into, because I know on the show, because I'm sure, I mean, you probably talk about this all the time, but on the show, it says that you were 711 pounds. That was like your yeah. your highest weight, right? Or the highest weight that they showed on the show. But I know that you were actually larger than that at one point, correct? So, yeah, like eight years ago, I was uh, like 845 pounds, Jeez. something like that. Maybe like, yeah, it was like eight years ago, Some. I can't remember the exact date because it was a long time ago. And to be honest, some of that stuff uh, isn't like great to think about. But yeah, it was uh, it was 845 pounds was my biggest. The only reason we even know how large I was is because when I went into the uh, hospital, they put me in one of those bariatric beds uh, that that weigh you. Mm -hmm. And we did we had never even heard of those things before, and we thought it was like some kind of like pressure thing or you know showing you the air pressure. And the doctor was like. No, that's how much your son weighs. The bed oh is like God, weighing him right dude. now. So uh, what in your head, what did you think you weighed at that point? Do you remember? So like you, when you get big, like that big, numbers just stop kind of like mattering. Like I knew I was over seven. I knew I was over 600 pounds. Um, and I guess it's just at one point you just, I don't want to say you don't care, but like you just, it become it's almost like when a billionaire becomes a billionaire like you're rich you mm -hmm. don't you know dollar sign dollars don't mean that much to you anymore because you just have so much so it's just like I, i'm rich why does it matter so mm -hmm. i was huge obese morbidly obese like if there's a level past that and i was just like numbers don't matter i probably thought i was in like the 650 range wow but i mean i could easily understand or maybe even like 700 i but like when the doctor said 845, I didn't have like a moment of like, oh my God, I'm massive. I was just like, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So you, you, it wasn't for you. You were almost past the point of denial. You were just like, yeah, you, you know. It's, yeah. Oh, you're way into acceptance. Like even on the show when Dr. Proctor is like, you know, you're going to die. Like I didn't have a moment of like just breaking down in tears and denying that he was correct. Like you have a huge, it's, it's literally just like a drug addiction you have an acceptance in your head and in your heart and just in your mind that you're like, this is going to kill me. There's no turning back mm -hmm. and I'm okay with it. It it's, sucks it's, to say that, but like you just, you're oblivious to like your mortality because you're just living like that. Yeah. No, I mean, it doesn't sound ridiculous because I, so at my highest weight, I was, I was only almost 400 pounds. Like that's as big as yeah. I got. Right. But even then for me, I was at that point, like if a doctor said you're going to die, I was just like, I know that I'm going to die because of this, but I just kind of, I don't know if this was the same for you, but like, I just kind of accepted it because I was like, there's no way I can lose weight. I've tried to lose weight a, a bunch of times. Like my weight is going to kill me period. Like that's just how it's oh, going yeah. to be. I figured, um, I figured either something was going to happen to me to where my life ended and I wouldn't be able to get out of that situation because of my weight or my weight just would end up killing me. Like, it's a weird thing. Um, cause people always ask me like, what caused your weight gain and all this. And I try to tell them, I'm like, I have never in my life been the thin kid or the small kid. When I was born, I was 12 pounds and some odd ounces. 12 pounds? Uh, yeah, I was literally, or maybe like, <laughs> I think I may have been 11. Me and my brother, uh, I can't ever remember the exact number, but I was around 12. Either I was 12 pounds, 11 ounces, or I was 11 pounds and like some odd ounces to be 12 pounds. Um, but I was huge. I was a big yeah. kid. Um, and my mother gave birth to me naturally. God bless her. She's <laughs> um, But like, uh, 
I, like I've never been small. The smallest I've ever, like when I was a kid, you're really active outside. So like, and I played uh, recreational baseball. So like that kind of kept the weight down. But even then I was chunky. I really like to eat. Um, it's always been fun. I love food. But, uh, and then I in see. high school, I think the lowest I ever got, like my senior year was 250. And that's not awful, but like, that's the lowest I got. Like I easily was pushing 300 at one point in high school. And then I got to 250 by doing like, I think I did Metabolife mm. uh, and some other diet pills because my mom's had me on so many different things because this was all before like surgery was ever an option. Uh, so I've tried diet pills. I've tried um, diets. I've given the gym thing a try, but just food was always there. So mm -hmm. I've always been big. Always. Yeah, that's what I that was what I, what I was going to ask next was how you gained the weight because I think like something that people always talk about when it's like someone has a, an amazing weight loss and like they've lost a lot of weight is like how did you do it how'd you do it but what I think is not more interesting but at least as interesting your dog is so cute is how how you got to your biggest size because everyone has such a different story. Like it's yeah. funny cause your, your story sounds very similar to mine. Like when I was in high school, I was actually around that weight. I probably was like 300 when I graduated. I never really yeah. lost any weight. Like I was all, I just gained, like I pretty much just gained until I started losing, actually finally deciding to lose my weight. Um, but it's, it's really interesting. And, but I feel like people that got as, you know, up to 700, 800 pounds for the most part, it's people that have been overweight basically their entire life. Like it just kind of continued yeah, to rise. Given, yeah. I, I've, the only thing I've ever heard is either they were, they were always overweight battling some kind of thing, or they got like an illness. Like I do, I do know, um, I can't remember what it is, but like, if you're a diabetic and you don't take your insulin or you do something like that one of those can cause like weight gain so i've heard of like that happening and then other otherwise them just getting like a rare uh disease or something that causes weight gain or they get put on like some kind of medicine steroids or something their, like that yeah, yeah steroids are like they're, they're like i have heard of birth control actually causing like yeah. a tremendous amount of weight gain um but other than that most of the time it's just you were always fat mm -hmm. and you got fat so I'm kind of but, curious uh, when you, uh, so you were like, the thing that blows my mind is that you were at 845 pounds at one point and then in the yeah. show you're 711 pounds. So take me through like, how did you, what, what happened there? I'll give you like a whole thing. So like, perfect. I, so like I was, I was probably pushing like 400 pounds and I worked in restaurants and you get discounts. So I ate at those restaurants. <laughs> I got free food. So um, I got bigger, um, and then I got to probably like 500 pounds, probably. So my, my highest, like active, normal, still driving, still trying to work weight was probably like 525. Uh, and then I was sleeping at my mother's house, uh, cause I had to work like that afternoon or the next day or something. And I rolled off the bed, my old bed and uh, the, she had put a smaller bed, uh, mattress on a bigger bed frame. So it was like a king bed frame and she put a queen mattress on it. I rolled off the bed and the box spring, which was, or not the box spring, but the frame that was metal went into my ankle and like cut it open. Uh, and then I had to get stitches because of my weight. They were like, you cannot walk on this at all or it will burst open again. You'll just have to get stitches again and be a mm. repeated process. So I was immobile for a couple of months and that's where I just ate. I was already living with my dad and, and I just ate really bad. Like it's talked about on the show, but I just ate awful food and it's not, you know, in the past I may have been like, he was an enabler, which I partially do still believe. But listen, I was shoveling that food in fully on my, of my own, like, uh, true, uh, uh my own will or whatever yeah, you want to yeah. say. Like I liked food. I was demanding. I was a baby about stuff. I wanted things. <laughs> he was willing to get it. So I was like, this is heaven. We're just going to keep eating. This is so mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Um, so that's where I ballooned up. Then one day, um, I, like when you get to 845, so like everything on the show, man, I'm really trying to not jump around, but I will. Everything on the show that like, that they show like me bathing outside, uh, being really big and not putting on clothes in my room. All that was really when I was 800 pounds. When to get on the show, you had to basically give them like a, a list of things that happened to you as you were big that you had to go through. You were like, hey, I wasn't able to bathe inside. Hey, I don't wear clothes because I'm massive. I just sit in my room naked and play video games. 
all those things were things I did when I was 800 pounds. And then when you get on the show, they're like, hey, we want to reenact all this stuff. Ah, okay. So I wasn't actually having to bathe outside when the show filmed, but because I had had to have done that when I was 800 pounds and just not able to get up out of our shower, they were like, we're going to put it on the show. And we, so we need to do this. So that's why all that stuff is something I had to do, but it's somewhat scripted and it's a reenactment basically. Yeah. They don't say that, but it is. Okay, um, but before we go any further, because this is like yeah. something that was like really interesting to me, um, because at when you were on the show, you were 711 pounds. Like I'm assuming yeah, you were around right. that weight when you were when you were filming the uh, that scene of you getting into the um, the trough outside or whatever. One thing that was really, honestly, like very surprising to me was how mobile you were at that weight. I've, um, it's weird. My were body's you, just always my body's always been able to catch up. So that's what I was. So at, at the point where I'm 845 pounds, uh, that's where I had lost the mobility. Like, okay, uh, that's what I, I wanted to know. I was going to ask if if yeah. it, if you lost that when you were at your highest weight. Yeah, because I would like that's why the reason I was showering outside is because I, our bathroom in this house is already uh, a special kind of way because a handicapped person lived here before and they would roll them into the shower in a wheelchair. So it's big. It's a big shower. Um, and I would sit in the floor to get under like folds and wash myself and bathe myself. Uh, God, some of the saying, some of the stuff just sucks to rethink, but yeah, I, I understand. Uh, so I would have to do that, but then you would have to get up and there was man at like 800 pounds, probably. Cause I did, I, I'm pretty sure I gained some more after this. There was a day where like I had hurt my toe or hurt my knee or something and I couldn't get out of the shower. I sat in the shower, I think for nine hours. Uh, and like my dad couldn't get me up because I was a I was a I was a truck I was a physical golf cart just sitting on the ground and I couldn't get up I I just couldn't I try and I and I say this stuff with humor because I to look back on it now it is humorous I was probably a big sensitive little baby back then and it would have made me cry to like say that stuff about myself but like I use the humor now to kind of like soften the blow but like mm -hmm. there was no way he was gonna be able to get me up I couldn't get up. So I literally sat in the shower for like nine hours. Just, I even remember asking him to bring me my phone so I could watch something so I wasn't bored. Uh, and then I crawled out over this ledge and like cut my ankle over be uh, open because the, the floor is like tile. And then I used the like toilet to lift myself up. And that's when I was like, hey, I can't use this shower anymore. Like I can't do this. And he was like, well, I'll try and figure something out. That's when he bought the trough. And then like, like the show doesn't go into it, but physically, like I couldn't use the bathroom. Like, I, yeah. like there was nothing. I was put down to my like most infantile self, like form. Like there was nothing I could do for myself. Um, I was a complete and utter like invalid. Like I was able to move my arms and feed myself, but I couldn't like clean myself in a normal way. I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and like there was a day where I sat in the floor because the couch was just not. I mean, it was big enough, but like. If people came over, I couldn't sit on the couch because I would take up most of the couch. So I sat on the floor, and then I remember trying to get up, and I just physically couldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is like, and like the floor is massive, and usually I can use myself, use the couch to get up, but I couldn't. So we called my cousin Ed, who's on the show, Family by the Ton, with me, uh, and then he he was working for the fire department still, and this was like I said eight years ago, so like six years before the show, and uh, he brought a friend over that worked at the fire department with him. They wrapped a sheet behind me, a bed sheet, and then used that to kind of like leverage me up. And then my uh, one of my aunts was like, "This is this is bad. Like like dude, you're at the point now where like you can't function as a person, and you will die. Like yeah. you're gonna die uh, if you don't do something. So you should." And she didn't say it exactly like that, but she definitely put like the mortality like in there. She was like, you, tomorrow you should just wake up and go to the emergency room. So that's what we did. And that's when I, uh, that's when the whole, like, I was 800, that's when they said, hey, you're 845 pounds. You wow. have sleep apnea. I stayed in the hospital for three and a half weeks just for being overweight. I lost 50 pounds in the hospital just sitting in there eating their food uh, and, like, waking up on their schedule and getting oxygen when I slept. Mm. Uh and like, then I went home on oxygen with like a big machine with like a tube up my around my face. And uh, that's when I started to go to the gym and walk in the pool. I ate better, I ate salads. And I lost 
330 pounds just like doing normal stuff in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Like being a normal person, eating medium-sized salads, uh, drinking water, going to the gym and walking and swimming. And then I hit like 530 pounds or something. Uh, and I ballooned, I mean, I plateaued really hard. And I guess without noticing it, I hit some kind of like depression level where I was like, there was a point of where I was depressed. I wasn't losing more weight. And then I was afraid of cutting back more on like food and sweet tea and stuff like that. Cause I did still eat bad occasionally. Uh, and I was like, I'm just not willing to give up this stuff anymore. I'm not willing mm -hmm. to give up my one sweet tea a day or my medium salad or my piece of candy once a week and uh or maybe twice a week i don't remember and i just gained weight back to like 700 pounds and that's when the whole like show gotten or got offered to me the opportunity mm -hmm. man Sorry, i mean like, that's a no lot. no no i i it's better than not talking a lot so yeah. i i mean there's just so much there i think like the whole one thing that I think is really interesting and that I like to to bring up is that when you are at that size or even, you know, not even that big, but like when you're like 400, 500 pounds, it's in, it's yeah. insane to me how little changes can make like big can like make big results. Right. Like you don't have to to if you're, you know, 500 pounds, you don't have to eat like only salads and drink only water and work out a ton to yeah. lose a lot of weight. Like you can make small oh, no. changes like I'm going to cut out soda. I'm going to cut out, you know, things that I know are bad for me. Right. Like like the, the that burger that they showed you make with like the the, the cheeseburger on top of the. the like, bang. <laughs> yeah. See, people when I when I said that. I said that in my video. I was like, "Oh, he made a big gangbang with like," and they're like, "How would you? How could you say that?" I'm like, "That's what it's called. Like, that's the name of it." Yeah. Okay, I'm glad that you like know. That, yeah, I mean, look, the funny thing is, is, like, when when I even like like to think now, um, hold on, hey, will you let him outside or something? To think now that like, uh, man, it's I don't know. It's just so funny, like that they were like, "We're gonna get you some McDonald's," and I was like, "We're gonna definitely get a McChicken and a McDouble mm -hmm. or like a double cheeseburger." Well, you get the McDouble because it's cheaper, whatever. Yeah. But double cheeseburger just has a nice piece of cheese. I know that. But like, I was like, we're gonna do this because I'm 100 percent gonna eat this. But yeah, I was like, and then the guy was like, oh, you're in a gangbang, and I was like, thank. I, I was, I was like, thank God, other people know about this. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, some people so, just don't know. Like, some people don't know about any of that stuff. But like, when you eat a lot, you know a lot. Dude, that's. I mean, that was me, man. Like when when I was at my heaviest, I one didn't have much money, so it was like, how can I get? But I didn't think of it like this. But this is what it ended up being. It was pretty much how can I get the most amount of calories for the least amount of money? Like, oh yeah, all day. That's how can I get the most food that tastes good mm -hmm. without spending like all my like. Listen, it's not about like you want a steak, let someone else buy it. You got you got you got six seven dollars, Taco Bell, McDonald's. Wendy's, mm -hmm. Crystals, like those places don't have great food, but the food tastes good. The end result may be absolutely awful for you to live through, but the food when you're taking it in for the dollar you're putting out there is so good. Mm -hmm. People can like, you know, crap on those places all they want. Those are billion dollar companies. Oh yeah. So they're doing something right. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I kind of want to get into the actual show. So t t take me through that. Like, how did you end up like applying, and, and what was the whole experience like of being like actually being on the show? So I was I was somewhat familiar with like how to be on a sh like how the uh, like the process of uh, I don't I want to say not interviewing, but like the process of getting put through possibly being on a show. I was almost on the Biggest Loser like. 10 years ago like i went through every i was i got through all this other all this preliminary stuff interview stuff and then they just wanted a five minute video about my life uh and like the difficulties of being overweight and i guess i just didn't take it seriously so that never went anywhere but a friend of mine uh when i was like seven when i was in the 700 pound range she uh a really good i mean she's basically if i don't say this she's my best friend <laughs> i have to say that because if she watches this she'll be annoyed so she messaged me on Facebook and was like, hey, I have a friend of a friend who has the opportunity to be on this show. It would involve getting uh, weight loss surgery and they would just kind of like film your life uh, and like, you know, a day in your life or whatever. And it would be, you know, whatever. I don't, she didn't know all the details, but I can get in touch, get, get you in touch with that friend who can then get you in touch with my other friend or, or her friend. And uh, so, yeah, I was like, I'm down. Me and my mother had already discussed like 
uh, dieting had worked a little bit and like working out had worked a little bit, but like getting uh, like sleeve surgery, stomach surgery, whatever you want to call it, bariatric surgery, that would be something that would be great. We were saving up money kind of to try and get it done. And this was like a golden like ticket being handed to me. And I was like, yeah, yeah. done. Uh, so I got in touch with my friend, Amanda's friend, Nikki. And then Nikki got me in touch with Amy, who's on the show with me. Mm. Because I had, she's not really, okay. I know this might break like some people's way of thinking everything on TV is real. But Amy and Amanda on the show are not my cousins. I had never met either one of them before the show. <laughs> uh, and like, that's another thing that like really blows my mind. People think like the show is so real. And the first thing I always jump to tell them is Amy's not my cousin. Amanda's not my cousin. I physically never even met them or heard of them before the show. And then they're like, oh my God, everything I thought I knew is a lie. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'm not a jerk. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, that's kind of that's what that was one of the things that I wanted to talk about is because like in the show they definitely paint you as like this really um, negative and like really mean what? to like they make you look like you're really mean to your dad. Okay, so I probably was. Okay, mean. all right. So like that's man, it's it's so it's crazy. Like no one would ever go up to like a drug addict that's just addicted to heroin and be like, "You're really rude to your mom." Like I that's, was that's... in a miserable, I was in a miserable situation and I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not making excuses. I was an absolute jerk of a person. The show, in my opinion, def definitely like amplifies it. They cut out a lot of funny, good conversations to specifically make me look like the world's biggest jerk. I'm a baby. Um, I've had people message me on Instagram and say some not so great things to me, which is understandable. Because because of the things they've gone through in their life with their parents, and you know they miss them or, or or they don't see them anymore or something like that, they're just estranged or whatever. And uh, and I, I'm like, hey, listen, like the show is made to make you either one like bond with me through the fact that I'm huge and you're like, man, this guy's struggling. I want to see if he makes it. I'm big myself, or they want you to hate me because you're gonna watch me because you don't like me. Or maybe they're going to, like, make you feel bad for me or something. They don't really care if you like me or not. They just want you to watch the show. Like, they, they don't care if you think I'm a good person or not. They just want you to watch. So, and then the whole – so the other funny thing is, is on the show, they definitely make it look like I'm not – you know, I'm not getting the surgery. Like, they're, they're like, Casey doesn't know. Listen, Casey, this is what we need you to say. We need you to fully express this opinion of being, like, still really scared and on the fence of getting the surgery. The only reason I did the show, except for the fact that I love attention, which is admitted, uh, <laughs> was because the surgery was involved and they were paying for it. That's yeah. it. I had no insurance. They were like, we'll help you. We'll figure this out. Uh, everything will be paid for to us. So just, you're good. And I was like, done. Mm -hmm. You guys can make me look like the biggest jerk. I mean, I didn't know that. But now yeah. thinking afterwards, I really don't care how bad I look. Um, and like the, it's people are all some people message me and I do kind of think this in the back of my head is uh they uh what's it called not exposed when they use you for something so, I mean you just say that they used you for it yeah yeah they, I mean they used me for views they mm -hmm. exploited exploitation exploited so, there we that's go, a, yeah, there yeah. You go. they exploited me and uh, and the rest of us for views of course. Like they, like, you know what? But that's 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 a network television show's job. It's hundred percent. Like I don't blame them. I'm not mad at them. Do I kind of wish that I had not said some things that they may have lined me up to say? Sure. Do I kind of wish I could have been like, hey, Dad, when they tell you to walk in the room and talk about your your order being messed up, to you know, tell them that you've already ate, so I don't look like a big jerk for taking your food that you didn't actually want or need. Or like you were never supposed to get. Like there's the show is slightly scripted, suggested situations, and uh, um, they hand you these things called beats, and they're like, we need you to say this, say this, this needs to be said a lot, express this a lot. You're upset right now. Remember that. Remember, let's take you back to that moment so you can express how upset you are. Like they they make you look a certain way because they don't care. They just want you to watch. Yeah. I mean, it's it's 
it's funny because like when you talk to someone about it, it's like, yeah, of course. But then the people that like when you are caught up watching the show, it just seems so real that you're like, oh, yeah. I don't know. Like it's hard to, to make that distinction unless you're there. It, it's the funniest thing is, is like I had no idea um, when things were going on that that they. So I have ne I mean, I've never been on a show. I've done very little like Twitch streaming. I've never had anybody put a camera in front of me uh, before all this. I mean, maybe like little like videos on Facebook or Snapchat, yeah. or whatever. But um, and I like to perform and be funny in front of people. But I've never had anyone take something I've done, uh, edit it or do something with it, and then put it out there for people to see. I've never had that kind of thing. I've never been ex in, in any kind of like TV show thing. But there was a point to where I would physically see the other people on the show go up, be in a bad mood, and then just cameras on. And they're like. Hey, how's it going? Like mm -hmm. they're they're not happy. They're annoyed. Camera turns on. How's yeah. it going, guys? I'm really happy. And I wasn't I wasn't doing that. If I was mm -hmm. annoyed, I was up at eight o'clock in the morning. I was annoyed, and yeah. I wasn't happy. And it was going to show on the show because I just I'm I'm pretty genuine. I don't usually talk with a filter. I don't um I say what's on my mind unless it's like super controversial and I don't want to be in like a stupid conversation. But like I don't. I didn't change and at one point i was like okay from now on when this camera turns on i have to be a specific person because i know that i'm not looking good mm -hmm. because i know that they're catching me in these awful moments and um they're they're specifically trying to make me look a certain way like there's a there's a there's a scene from the show and uh they were in the, do the doctor's office and i'm talking to my mom and my dad and the doctor about um video games not really being like the issue and then when we go back into the lobby they pull the camera back up and and it's it's me now arguing with my mom and my dad about uh the conversation we had just had that wasn't being filmed mm -hmm. the, the day was over that was a conversation we were having in the lobby while the cameras were off and they just and i don't even think our uh mics were still on us they had already taken them off but as we were having this like real argument because i was truly annoyed uh, mm -hmm. they were like, camera up. Oh my God, Mike, get a camera, pull it up. So that they started to film again. And that day my mom was like, if that ever happens again, I won't be on the show. Anymore. Yeah. She, she was very annoyed that we were having like a real argument, uh, on the show. Um, to this day, I still stand by my opinion, but whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, like they, they don't care if you like me, they, they, they just want you to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, the perfect example is, there's another show that's basically just like ours. Uh, it's called Sisters by the Ton or something. They're now getting a second season. Mm -hmm. They're doing it. We didn't. We yeah. all lost weight. I believe one of them didn't. I, I didn't watch the show because I can't watch stuff like this about uh, stuff that I went through. It's just, I cry. So yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. It's so difficult. But uh, they're getting a second season, and I'm pretty sure it's because they were just a train wreck. I don't know. I didn't watch. It's just my assumption. Yeah. But, yeah. So okay, I mean, <laughs> there's so much there, but I wanna I wanna get into like your actual weight loss, um, because yeah. I think it's dude, it's it's crazy, dude. Like th how you look now versus how you look, dude. It's 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 unbelievable. Um, so I kind of want to talk about like you can bring up the show and stuff, obviously, but I mean like as far as like the surgery, how that went for you, how the recovery was, and kind of how your journey has been since that happened. I'm I'm interested in that. Yeah. Okay anything in particular or just like well i'm just kind of curious like what was going through your head when you like the day that you got the surgery was there any like special protocols you had to go through you know stuff like that so um when i when they first were like if you want the surgery you need to lose so i kept telling people it's 50 pounds but apparently because i saw on a clip a couple days ago they had asked me to lose 60 pounds uh before the surgery and that's just to be sure that like there's a couple things before you get the surgery they make you do to make sure there's not some weird uh emotional mental attachment to food mm -hmm. uh which i mean i do definitely have both of those things i just kind of i guess do an okay job at like not giving into it but um but you go to a you go to a psychiatrist to make sure everything's good in your head and like mental and everything mm -hmm. and then um they give you a challenge of losing weight because they want to make sure that you're really trying to do this so they said mm -hmm. lose 60 i lost 80 um Beast during mode. the filming of like the show or whatever so i went into the surgery probably around like 
six thirty, I guess. Yeah. Something like that. I'm not fully sure on the numbers. Um, or actually maybe even a little higher. Cause I think I gained weight the next time I went in. I'm not sure. Uh, so, and then like the day of the surgery, I had already seen all three of the other people get the surgery. Um, hmm. I had, uh, seen the aftermath, uh, Amy had a reaction to the medicine and did not, I think, follow the exact like diet. I don't know particularly, I know she got sick at some point. Uh, and then she got really bad dehydration, which means she just didn't drink enough. And then Amanda had an allergic reaction to her medicine she was taking. And I was like, I'm going to die. This is, <laughs> this is it. This is I, like both these people have had this surgery, went into some crazy like spin. Like Amanda was in the hospital four, like four times after like literally the day Ed's getting his surgery. And that was real. She was getting taken to the emergency room in the hospital. And I was like, that's it. Like, guys, I don't know if this is it. Like, this ain't it, chief. Like, I'm mm -hmm. really not feeling this whole thing. I know I got to get the surgery, but like to think that now I have to get something like I might need to fear life living afterwards is just not a fun thought. And then Ed gets the surgery. And he's like, I'm going back to work in two days. Uh, like, he's like, yeah, I'm feeling great. Had the surgery. Uh, I'm going to work. Like he had the surgery on a Monday. He was, I think, back at work on Thursday. Jeez. Literally. And it's not just, <laughs> so he, but he was the smallest of all of us. He's the tallest. Uh, so the weight was going to uh, be not, not as difficult. The weight wasn't as much as like a, I mean, it was immobilizing, but it wasn't so much of a thing because he had also lost weight before the surgery as well. Mm -hmm. um, so like he was good. He was functioning like a normal person already. And I was like, okay, so wait. She got dehydrated, which means really she didn't drink. She just didn't follow exactly what she was supposed to do, I guess, mm -hmm. which is still not not easy because they want you to drink, but you don't feel like drinking because you just had surgery. And yeah. then she had an allergic reaction. And then he's like doing backflips. <laughs> so like this could go really well, but I was still super scared. I had never had surgery. I had never been put under. I had only had stitches like twice. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, so I cried. I cried when I got to the hospital. I cried when I saw, when I like checked into the hospital. I cried when they took me back to the room to get ready for surgery. And then I cried as they wheeled me out from saying goodbye to my family. Mm -hmm. I was pretty emotional. Yeah. Uh, to say the least, I was terrified, which is really funny because like the Dr. Mike even said it, he's like, he, I, I was scared to get the surgery because of like, uh, they had said when you get put under, there's a chance you may just not wake up, especially yeah. when you have something like sleep apnea, which I had. So I was like, both of these things are not good. Yeah. Uh, and then he's like, it's funny. This guy, Casey is scared of going under and getting this surgery because of all these complications. But like he doesn't understand that, like there's so much higher of a chance of him dying from just being obese, which is really funny to think about. Because it's like I had fully accepted dying from being overweight mm -hmm. and not and not even think about it one way or the other. But like getting this surgery was terrifying. It's it, like I said Very in my video, it's the uh, it's the fear of the unknown. I think is the biggest yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's an acceptance thing that you've accepted, and then you're like, but well, we never talked about this. Like I don't, mm -hmm. I'm cool with this because I'm there, and I know that might happen. But this whole like left turn that might happen, I don't I don't know how that's that's scary. And that's really what it was like exactly what you said the fear of the unknown so how was your um like recovery and then what was it like like how much food were you able to eat post-surgery um and then like I, I would love to know like how are you how did you get to where you are now because i mean you look freaking insane like at the end of the show you were still like 500 something pounds i think right when they did that reveal or whatever and now you're much much leaner than that so i would just love to hear how you've done on your own Kill. You are, yeah. hey man, you um, are, bro. When when yeah, when, when, so, when Dr. Mike showed that last the video that you posted on your channel, I was I was dude, I was genuinely blown away. Like, I was so it's it's insane, right. man. Oh, okay, so so like uh, let's see. After my recovery, great. I would if anybody if people ask, should I get the surgery? And I'm like, yeah, do it. Mm -hmm. There was. The, there was never pain. The only two things that were ever painful, maybe there may be some I'm forgetting, but the anesthesia getting like stuck in your shoulders, 
that was that was uncomfortable uh -huh. and it was never like oh i'm dying it was just uncomfortable um and then i had to have a drain in my chest for some odd reason i don't know exactly why i don't think anything went wrong it was uncomfortable when they pulled that out because it's a tube leaving your body that's wow. a weird feeling and then um random other complaint my berry my little bed broke uh like leaning up and down so i had to sleep with my feet hanging off the edge that's legit all my complaints about the surgery wow. there was no extreme pain there was never a moment where i was like oh this is so bad no mm -hmm. it was all easy yeah. like it it was nothing and i'm and i'm i'm such a wuss i don't <laughs> like being pinched i don't like being bit i don't like stitches i don't like pain at all i cry instantly um i'm such a baby but but like i the like i don't even like shots and the only thing also i didn't really love was you have to get uh blood thinner shots or something i think that's what it's called don't quote me on this but the heparin uh they put it in your you know you have to get that tiny little shot and like a fatty thing but even that needle is so small that i didn't feel it like it was mm -hmm. nothing um so that like the recovery was super easy uh I have no, I, I tell people over and over, if you're fearful of the pain or whatever, get the surgery because it's nothing. Unless mm -hmm. you just don't follow the protocol they tell you afterwards. Um, and then afterwards, you know, it's just liquids, water, ice. We were buying Zaxby's and Chick-fil-A bags of ice every day, which is only a dollar. Yeah. But that ice is so good. It's that little crushed ice. I don't mm -hmm. know. To tell. But like I would eat that all day and then I would have uh, like some Jello or Gatorade Zero, Powerade Zero, whichever one it is, not a sponsor. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, the best meals I would have at first were, this was, and this, even thinking now how good this was. So you take Campbell's chicken noodle soup, strain everything out of it to where it's just the broth. Then you add a little bit of no salt, because it has no sodium, and that stuff is so good. A little bit of pepper, and then like hot sauce. Not a ton, but like a little bit for flavor. And I would just eat that for dinner. Mm. and it was so good because at first it was just water and it was no yeah. taste and then you finally get like flavor and you're like this is so good i love yeah. it oh god it was great um and then they move you into pureed food which is like scrambled eggs or soft solids is what they call it pureed uh like chicken or like baby i think you could eat baby food you could eat like uh the, we we made like a cauliflower chicken casserole thing that i was able to eat uh, I would mix it with these stewed tomatoes uh, just because it added, like, flavor, which now probably would taste terrible, but back then it was so good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like, I ate a ton of, like, scrambled eggs uh, and those uh, egg beater things. So that, and then you can go to, like, normal food. But that's over, like, a couple of months process. Uh, like, at first, I think you're on two weeks or two and a half weeks of just water or liquids. Uh, and then you're on, like, and then after that, it's, like, a month and a half of uh, total of just pureed food, soft solids, and then you can finally eat like meat, and then you can finally eat uh, cooked vegetables. And the last thing you can add in is like raw vegetables. Because the whole time I was like, why can't I have a salad? Why can't I have a salad? And then they were like, it's because raw vegetables just don't digest properly mm -hmm. and they're more difficult. So you can't have that yet. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that I, I do remember doing that was a mistake, it was like two weeks in and I was like, my body's a machine. Okay, I have an iron stomach. I know what I can do. My dad was eating Zaxby's and I was like, just let me have a fry. Mm -hmm. And I ate that fry. I, I even remember not chewing it really and just putting it in my mouth and uh, basically taking like two chews and swallowing it. I was in the bathroom for like an hour and a half on the floor just crying. Because oh. uh, my body, just my stomach just couldn't digest it properly. And it was literally the most, one of the most painful things I've ever went through in my like ever, probably really really stupid to do um i still had like a an attachment to food easily i mean i still do but uh but i was like i want something that's like solid and like a, an actual like substance to put in my mouth and that was a terrible mistake i did not do that again but uh but yeah I, and then i like the, at first i was only able to eat like tiny amounts uh you know maybe an egg and a half scrambled mm -hmm. egg or something uh nothing nothing substantial I, I can eat a good bit more now but even still sometimes it's surprising if i drink something while i'm eating the small amount i can have um 
And I guess that's like the recovery and the eating, like the whole process of like after the surgery eating. And now, I mean, to really, the, the first thing I started doing was I was losing weight and I was probably, the show had ended, it had already come out. I was probably in like the high 400s and I was like, man, I just want to go outside. And like, I don't like the heat. I don't like the sun. And it was summer. I know it was summer because the, some of the pictures and the videos I put on Instagram right after uh, were just, I was covered in sweat. I was just dying. It was mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, and I was just like, I want to go outside. I want to actually walk and see this area. Because I've lived in High Falls for years. Mm -hmm. I've heard there was trails. I've heard there's all these nice little areas. And I've never really been out there. I've seen like the main stuff you would see from the car. Or like, you know, walk five feet to the edge of our dock or our, yeah. our lake, our land. But I'd never seen these trails or anything. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go outside and I'm going to walk. So the first day I took this little uh, path out of our driveway, walked into the uh, the, this uh, little boat part of the park, and then out and then down the road, there's a little side trail. Went down that, looked at the water, um, and then I went down this hill. And it was probably almost a mile that I walked. Uh, mm -hmm. total because I walked back and I remember I was I was done on the way back uh, and I, I called my dad and I was like hey need you to get in the truck <laughs> hey, you come pick me up because I'm going to pass out on the side of the road today. I'm going mm -hmm. uphill I'm 470 something pounds maybe 80 I'm not sure I'd have to look on like the page when I posted and I was like this is this is rough mm -hmm. I'm really really hot I'm really sweaty and I have this stick. I brought this bag with me. Everything hurts. Please come get me. So he got in the truck and it was like I said, it was just a mile over on this little side road and he came and got me. But I put some pictures up on Instagram. And that was the first day and I was like, this wasn't that bad. Like yeah. I was really tired afterwards, but it's also because I went downhill, I went uphill and I had seen this other trail and I was like, that was fun. I, I, I was hot and I was sweaty, but it was enjoyable. So then I had, uh, I just took my phone the next day, uh, put some headphones in and I went down this other side trail that said it was like two miles long. I did that. And then at the end of that, I was like, hey, so you remember that phone call a couple of days ago? I'm gonna need you to come get me again because <laughs> I am exhausted. I'm more tired than I was the day before, the week before, but I did this whole trail and, and it was dark when I think I got mm -hmm. out of there. And uh, I was like, hey, I, don't think I can make it home. Will you come get me? So again, he got in the car and came and got me. Uh, and then I was like, you know what? That, again, like it wasn't that bad. I was able to do it. I got this many steps in. We're going to do it again. So then mm -hmm. I did it again. And then the next time I did it with some friends and uh, it was, it's funny because the third time I went out hiking, it was no big deal. I made it all the way back home. Um, no problem. But again, I was listening to music the whole time. I think I even stopped to make a quick YouTube video or post on my like, Instagram. Uh, and uh it was it was easy it wasn't hard i didn't talk through the whole thing but the time that i went with my two friends as you can see i like to talk so mm -hmm. like i was talking to them the whole time and then i was like man this is so much more difficult now that i'm using all this like energy talking and using yeah. up all my air to speak to y'all so i was done i was like we're calling dad mm -hmm. he's coming to get me because i will not make it home this time it's really bad so so again, like they went with me and that was the fourth time. And then I just started doing it more and more. I went hiking, uh, around, at least I have, there's a park, an, an animal reserve. I went over there and went hiking because they have like a huge trail thing over there. Uh, and then I did some more at my house. Uh, I went to another place and then I was in a bunch of 5Ks. In October of 2019, uh, which I don't know why I said it like that. In October of last year, <laughs> I was in three 5Ks in one month. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was in one for the people that produced the show in Atlanta. And then I was in uh, one for a friend of mine, Steven Johnson. His uh, the, his family does a walk for uh, brain cancer, brain research and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I was at that one that was in Atlanta. Uh, and then I was in another one that was at the end of the month uh, for the doctor's office, Dr. Proctor and them. It was a walk. It's actually a show. Walk yeah. obesity. Uh, and then... I did, uh, I did that 5k and I was like, and none of them were like the, the one in Atlanta was bad. It was difficult uh -huh. because it was, it was on the street up and downhill. Uh, then the second one with Steven and his family and his, and some friends of ours was moderately difficult. Uh, and then the one where we walked around a track, 
they were like, Hey, you've done your laps. And I was like, are you sure? Uh -huh. I did it was like, it was hot, but I didn't feel tired. I was sweaty. And I was like, there's, this is so weird to like be able to do this and not feel it. And then we did like a interview thing with a bunch of like a little Q and a thing afterwards. But like that, like it was just a lot of hiking and mm -hmm. I was watching what I ate, you know, like not eating massive meals because my stomach wouldn't allow it. Uh, eating smart. I did a lot of salads, um, wraps, uh, baked wings, which apparently still isn't really that great for you. But still, I drank a ton of water. Uh, I got really into drinking Propel, only two flavors, but I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, Coke Zero occasionally, because I still do like soda a little bit. Yeah. And I know that's not good for you, but like I would go to restaurants and I would get a sweet tea, one pay $4 mm. for it and then just drink water. I would get a Coke zero and drink a couple of that and then drink water. But like if I drink when I eat, I can only, I eat less because the, because my stomach is so small that the liquid actually takes up substan substantial uh, portion of it. So I just can't eat as much. Yeah. It's, and that's um, just how it happened. I just, I just went hiking. I never was like, I was only really crazy in the gym before the show. Uh, yeah. I had a personal trainer, not the guy Dex from the show. I went to the gym and did some like exercise stuff and then I would swim. And that was all well before the show. Mm -hmm. uh, really afterwards, I mean, I probably could have lost. I probably should be smaller than this if I would have put more effort into going into the gym. But then also this year, Corona. Yeah. I got a job. So like the gym just wasn't an option. Because it was it's, shut down. Man, the, I'm so glad you brought up the walking because that's one of the um, – that's one of the most, I think, underrated forms of exercise um, yeah. that people like, especially bigger people, they think that um, they think that you have to like uh, one of the criticisms that that Mike had that I really agreed with him that I was really glad that he brought it up was like people will see these shows a lot of times and they'll see these people in the gym like getting killed by these personal trainers and they think like, oh, I need to go to the gym to lose weight. I need to do these crazy workouts. And I'm like, you really don't. honestly, it's the opposite of that. Like I would I would rather you just go on walks and find something that you enjoy doing. Like instead of feeling like you need to force yourself to go um, to go to the gym, and so I think it's it's so interesting hearing you bring that up on your own was the fact that you found something like for you like hiking or just going on walks in general, and like the fact that you did f three five Ks in a single month, like that is so crazy compared I'm to an like, anomaly. Yeah, I'm an anomaly. It's, it's <laughs> but crazy. like just, just think about right like now. you know a year before that, like that just would yeah. have never been able to happen. You know, this is stuff I still think about when I go on runs. I'm like, man, like there was a time where like walking a mile was like very difficult for me. So it's Every, like there's so many things like I it's really weird. I like I I, I didn't do anything uh when I okay, I'm not gonna say that. When I think about what I went through in like the grander scale, it doesn't like now to this day, it kind of just completely like skips my mind. I don't mm -hmm. I don't at all think about the fact that I've lost five hundred pounds. I don't think about the fact that like I I I I made all this progress uh with the help of my family and my friends and like a TV show and doctors. Stuff. I don't think about any of that. The only times that ever I even think like, Oh my God, I used to be really, really big or stupid things where like, I realize I can run. Uh, mm -hmm. I put a new hole on my belt loop. I wear a smaller size pants, double XL clothes fit. Um, non scale, really, pictures. really weird, not weird, but like small things that I don't think a lot of people would super appreciate. Like when I first started losing weight and I first started driving, the thing that I would uh, judge by how much weight I had lost was how far my extra skin and my stomach sat away from the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. And that may sound very dumb, but like I would never move the seat and I would always keep my, my the back of the chair straight up so I, uh -huh. I didn't like the whole leaning back. And I would be like, okay, I have this much from the steering wheel for my gut and then I have uh -huh. this. And like it's just... That's how I would judge it, and I would like. I think I lost some weight. Wait a minute, my stomach's a little closer. Did somebody move the chair? Like <laughs> I would. That's legit. Like the little things. Like the fact that I. I mean, I don't run because I hate the fact that my skin just moves everywhere. But yeah, like, I, I know I physically can run a decent distance, uh, mm -hmm. or like a small distance. I can jump. I can stand. Like okay, I can stand on my tippy toes on one foot, and that is physically like in my head. It's like. How is this even possible? 
at one point I could barely stand on both my feet yeah. with the help of other people. Like there's really dumb, tiny things at my work. When I go down these steps, there's a, there's a, a, a it's a spiral a conveyor belt. And then one of the things that holds it up is this big metal beam right beside it. The fact that I know I can physically go between that beam and that spiral thing, when I first started working there, I couldn't. Mm-hmm. Is like, it's just these very dumb things that I'm like, I can do this now. Yeah. Like, I don't ever think about like the grander thing that I used to be so big until like something very tiny like clicks in my head. Uh, or I physically see clips from the show and someone says, like, wow, this guy's like, I cried at the end of the Dr. Mike thing when he was like watching. I cried watching yours. I cried watching <laughs> anything involving the show that I was on, really. Um, but like, I don't think about it until those things are like physically put in front of me again. Or like someone that I know, I've, it feels good to have people message me that have ne- that don't know me. And then like, they say like, hey, you've done great. You're an inspiration. But when my family or yeah. my friends who I see every day, yeah. take a moment to be like, hey man, like I don't think about it all the time. It really kind of skips my mind. But like at one point, oh man, I might cry right now. At one point, I thought you could have, like, died, Mm -hmm. and now you're better. Mm -hmm. So, like, that, like, means a lot, and, like, they they take the time to, like, say those things or whatever. Uh, That that kind of stuff, like, feels good, but um, it doesn't doesn't resonate to me, like, mentally where I come from until those things happen, because, like, it's just, like, I worked somewhere for a long time and then I lost that job. Like it, it's not, it's not a huge thing in your life. Like it's like mm-hmm. an ele- I went to elementary school at this place. Like it's not something that you yeah. think of anymore because it's just like, that's not who you are. That's not a part of your life anymore. So like yeah. you just kind of forget. Yeah. It sounds like, uh, what you kind of explained was, um, this is something that I've said a lot before in the past is like, I, I feel like now I'm living and not just existing. Like yeah, when I was I at my heaviest, yeah. I felt like I was just existing and now I'm like living. Yeah. And I think like all those little things, those little like, you know, non-scale victories, some people call it is like, those are things that remind you, oh, I'm living a life now. I'm not just existing in this body. Your life becomes, you, you, your life becomes monotonous. It's mm-hmm. a routine of like just miserableness. Like mm-hmm. when I, like it's, j- it's the same thing when like a person has the same nine to five job for 10 years. They had they go home and then they're they're living in this what they would consider well I would consider like a dream life I have like a wife and some kids they go home from their crappy job to their possible crappy house there may be a crappy home situation and they just they live in this this cycle of just awfulness and then they just mm-hmm. begin to hate everything mm-hmm. and that's what I did I woke up ate a ton of food played a game that I enjoyed. Um, but just lived in this miserable like cycle of negativity and it was just awful and i and i didn't do anything it was the same thing every day i wait i woke up in the middle in the afternoon around 12 ate almost the same thing from the same place almost every day played the same video game literally for five years without destiny what's up Mm -hmm. uh don't play it anymore but i played that game with the same people who i loved they were my friends it's it's even weird to like I had I had a completely different group of friends because and they were all virtual friends. They were all gaming friends spread out across the US and like a couple other countries and stuff. And they were my friends. I talked to them so much more than I spoke to my own family and my other like like real life friends that, that I did things with cuz they would come down. I wasn't able to really leave the house. They would come down and eat at my house one night and we would catch up a little bit, but like I spoke to my my gaming friends every single day. My mom and my dad, my dad may get it a little bit. My mother still to this day has no understanding of the connection I have to these people that meant Mm -hmm. so much to me that they were my family. They knew about the show when it was going on. They knew about the difficulty of me being overweight. They knew about everything Um, because I spoke to them every day for hours. Mm -hmm. I still keep in touch with a couple of them, but some of them still game a lot and I don't do it near as much. And that was just like the disconnect, but there's, but there are people, some of them I plan to go visit next year. Like I want to see them because they mean so much to me and they don't understand. They probably don't comprehend fully how much they really meant to me at one point in my life. But like, I didn't see my real life friends because 
I lived in this just awful cycle. And now I exist. I go do things. I mean, I do have a monotony of like work, of a monotonous kind of life, whereas I work Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. But like, I like my job. I love the people I work with. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I could physically do anything I want. Yeah. And that's the best feeling. If mm -hmm. I want to go to Alabama, I could. If I want to get a plane ticket to Florida or Hawaii or California, as long as I'm back here Sunday afternoon to go to work, everything's good. And I have the money to do that. I have the ability of getting on a plane. Yeah. I can't even explain to you how, how good it felt when I got on that plane to Texas like, like a month ago and I didn't have to ask the woman for a seatbelt connector. Yeah. Yep. I broke down in the plane on the in the seat. Luckily there was no one sitting beside me. I was bawling, crying because I didn't think it was gonna fit. Because that's I mean, seat belts on a plane are not big. Like they're already mm -hmm. small. The fact that I was able to get that on with ease was really one of the one of another thing to like hit me and be like, I'm not like massive anymore. Yeah. This feels so good. Um, and that was one just really big thing to hit. But like the fact that I can do whatever I want and I exist so much with just the drop of a dime, I can do whatever I want. is just such a different life than being like, Hey, we're waking up at 12. We're going to play this one video game for about eight or nine hours. We're going to mm -hmm. watch. I mean, the so something I brag about, but it's terrible. I watched how many seasons of game of Thrones were there? Eight. I have no nine. idea. Is that a weird question? Okay. All weird. I know is the last I one watched, was, was not good. <laughs> I watched seven seasons of that show in a week. Jeez. And they're hour long episodes. Yeah, that's no joke. I woke up watching the show, went to sleep watching the show. I didn't do anything else. I know that may like not really sound shocking to someone, but the episodes are an hour long. All I did was sit in my room and watch that show. Mm -hmm. So my entire day was just watching Game of Thrones because I wanted to catch up and watch it with my friends. But like that was something I did because I had nothing else to do and I wasn't doing anything. Yeah. And that's really awful to think about. No, it's I mean it's that it's that that prison that you're that you're in. Like I used yeah. to explain when I was bigger, I was like I feel like I'm trapped in an obese version of the real me. Like I am not like I I felt like there was someone else inside of me that was trying to get out but just couldn't because like I was literally be trapped inside of that. Um your, so that's your why is your identity your yeah. weight is who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like to say, like, I wasn't I wasn't living. I was just existing. Oh, um, yeah. I agree with but, that fully. But, man, dude, okay. Um, we need we need to end this because this has been over an hour now. Um, but, okay. dude, I uh, – yeah, I I appreciate you so much, man, like, sharing everything. This was – this has been absolutely amazing. I You have been very open with everything. Um, if there's, like, one – you know, one last thing I always like to ask everyone that I, like, interview or have a conversation with. If there's, like, one thing you can say to someone that might be in your position when you started, uh, you know, what would you say to that person? Someone just asked me this, like, a couple of days ago. Um it's really it's really difficult to get someone out of like a habit or like a lifestyle especially when like they're maintaining like if you you know people you know there may be someone out and i and i and i only use this because like i don't i feel like it's unfair to not understand that like being addicted to food is literally like being addicted to a drug but like mm -hmm. if there's someone out there that just socially uses cocaine or meth or and i know that's such a drastic like jump but like it's really hard when they're doing it and being successful at like still living their life. But understand that like you're just one bad like couple of months from really putting yourself in an awful situation. Absolutely, like, man. You can't you can't show someone what they might be later. Like you can give them examples, but they're gonna be like, That's not me. So it's really hard to like express to them, hey, I was literally in your situation. I can tell you what's going to happen if you keep on this uh, kind of path. And if it does get worse, it's very difficult to show them that. But advice, if they want to, if they if they are trying to get out of it, uh, and they're 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 understanding that this is a problem. Listen, cut out small things. Stop drinking so much sweet tea or soda. Uh, mm -hmm. And I say sweet tea because I'm from the south. Just try and get more water in your diet daily. Mm -hmm. uh, before you eat, drink water. After you eat, drink water. Before you go to bed, drink water. Drink more water. Uh, try and eat smaller portions, maybe more times throughout the day. Uh, don't have a whole steak, have half. Um, try and cut back on carbs as much as possible. 
you don't have to cut them out completely, but instead of having like a sub sandwich, get a wrap. Instead mm-hmm. of having nachos, maybe try and get like whatever you're eating on brown rice. Um, yeah. Try and just lower your calorie intake, increase protein, vegetables. Uh, honestly, have hibachi, but don't get the rice. It's so good. <laughs> God, people don't understand. It's great. I love it. But it's, like uh, vegetables, protein. Yeah, I mean, everything you're kind of explaining is um, is like what I call the common sense diet. You know, make smart yeah, but choices. Like, but like they just – sugar. It, this blows my mind that people don't know this. This is one thing I actually – this is what I would tell them. Sugar is a carb. That's what you need to know yeah. because they don't know it. And I don't know how they don't know that. Like I was talking to someone that works for an ambulance, like they're, they're literally a paramedic and they didn't know that sugar was a complex carb. And I was like, if you don't know this, then I don't know who may not know it. I think I'm saying that right. But like sugar is a carb. So if I'm telling you to cut out carbs, cut out sugar, mm-hmm. like drop that immediately as much as you can if you're you know really obese like overweight yeah if you're if you're small hey have yourself some cornbread you're good yeah but awesome man well thank you so much for for coming on um we have your your name is down there and everything so if anyone wants to follow you on instagram we got the uh we got the link and um I, seriously i appreciate it man hey i enjoyed it i appreciate it as well thanks a lot awesome man all right i'll see you later dude take care later peace